thought you'd like that. Matthew chapter 16, let's all stand for in honor of the Word of God. We're going to read from the, the Bible this morning. And uh, do, I love the Bible, amen. I got up and got to read from God's Word this morning and uh, enjoy getting to read God's Word. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to start in verse number 15. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 15. If you don't know where that's at, it's uh, after Revelations for Brother Dotson at the, at the other end. And, uh, no, okay, David. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 15, the Bible says, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Boy, you can park there and say, Amen. I was out sowing yesterday and I met a Mormon. And, uh, you know, they don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. So when I said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, boy, you know, uh, you know you're, getting into, you're getting into good stuff right there. Amen. He's looking at me. And uh, he's, I said, you know what? The Bible says he's the Son of the living God. Amen. Verse number 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And verse 18 is our text verse. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I would like to preach to you this morning on building a church. Amen. Building a church. It said there, and upon this rock I will build my church. This is Jesus talking. And Jesus says that he will build his church. Amen. So I'd like to preach, you, preach on that this morning, building a church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for everybody that is here that has made it a priority to be in the house of God this morning, and just as they should. Thank you, Lord, for that. Ask that Holy Spirit of God that we, you would speak to our hearts. Lord, that you'd speak to us through the message. Lord, we've come today to hear from you. Lord, not to hear my opinion, not to hear, Lord, uh, about, Lord, what uh, men think. Lord, we want to know what God thinks this morning. We want to get something from the Word of God. And ask that, Holy Spirit, you'd speak to the hearts of uh, every young man, every young lady, every adult, every child, every teenager. Lord, everybody that's here, Holy Spirit, I ask that you'd speak to their heart in a special way, Lord, where they know that they heard from the Lord this morning. As only you can do, Holy Spirit. Ask that you'd convict the hearts. Holy Spirit, if there's anybody here that doesn't know that if they died, that they'd go to heaven 100% sure. If they don't know that Jesus is their Savior, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you'd speak to their heart this morning, convict them of that, and that they would be willing to get that settled this morning. Lord, that they would come forward at the invitation time and allow us to show them the gospel and make 100% certain that if they died, they'd go to heaven. Lord, pray for the Christians in the room, that, Holy Spirit, you'd speak to us, and, and uh, Lord, speak and give us the truth that we need and that, we, that I can add another brick into the wall of faith, Lord, today. Lord, we love you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus established the greatest institution ever known to mankind. Amen. And that is the local church. I love church. Amen. I love going to church. I love everything about it. I love the songs we sing. I love the word of God that's preached. I love the fellowship of, of the brethren. I love everything about going to church, amen. And I hope that you do too. I hope that you love church. And a lot of people uh, have, have, turned, have, have gone away from church, and it's because most churches today have turned away from being church and turned into an entertainment system, amen. They've turned into where they don't try to preach the Word of God and let you know what God thinks. They just turn into a rock band concert to make you feel good and let you walk away thinking all's well and your life's going to be good and you're going to get a million dollars, amen? And it don't happen, amen? We turn into a Joel Olstein philosophy where uh, church is not about getting a hold of God and figuring out what God wants for our lives. It's more about peace and happiness and joy. I can't smile like he has. He's got a big old grin, amen? But Joel Olstein's wrong, amen? Church is not about just coming to make you feel good. Church is about getting a hold of God, amen? And I love church. And God wants church, amen, to be what He wants it to be. Jesus said He would build the church. There's a lot of books out there on how to build a church. And they tell you, well, you build a church through this, or you build a church through that, or uh, a lot of 
uh, liberals tell you, you you build a church by bringing in this rock band and you attract everybody, change the name to these one one name churches that give you an idea that church is going to be uh, some hip hop nonsense, amen. But that's not church, amen. Church is coming and hearing what God wants you to hear, amen. God wants you to be a part of a local church that you attend. But notice in the verse before we get started that Jesus said, I will build my church. There are a lot of churches out there, but not all of them belong to Jesus. Jesus said, I will build my church. Because Jesus knew that the devil has his church. People say, well, I can go to church anywhere. You can. But that doesn't mean that Jesus will be there. Jesus has a church. And Jesus will build his church. Amen? And that's the local, independent, Bible-believing, Baptist church. Amen? You can go across town to any other church, but it won't be His church. Amen? If they don't believe the Word of God and are a local, independent, Baptist church. Because Jesus started a church that believed what He taught, that would preach His doctrine, that would tell you the truth. Amen? Every other denomination will try to tell you that you have to work your way to heaven. But Jesus said, it's not by works where that you're saved, but by the blood of Christ that was shed. A lot of of churches out there will teach and preach another gospel. They'll tell you you can do the rosary to get to heaven. They'll tell you you can pay penance for your sin. They tell you there's a purgatory. They tell you if you get baptized that you'll go to heaven. They tell you that if you'll be a member of the church, that God will give you a name in heaven. They tell you all these things, but brother, let me tell you, they're wrong. And you know why? Because they're not His church. Jesus will build His church. Amen. And I believe that we need to first recognize Jesus' church. Amen. And that's what He started that in the Gospels here. When John the Baptist, amen, baptized and Jesus started his church, the Baptist church, amen. Go to the church that God started, amen. You can go to the devil's church, but you'll get the devil's doctrine. You can go to the devil's church, but you'll get the devil's result, amen. But Jesus has his church, and it's, and it's separated. You know why? Because look, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hell has been as long as the church has been alive and hell is trying to prevail against it. The devil is attacking the local independent Baptist church, but it doesn't seem to get one up on the church. You know why? Because Jesus said the gates of hell can't prevail because it's his church. Amen. The devil can't conquer. The devil can't get in. The devil can't take over and extinguish the Baptist church and extinguish his church. You know why? Because Jesus started it. Amen. You go to a church that believes the word of God and you'll hear good preaching. Amen. And the devil will try to get in there. But no matter what the devil does, if that church holds true to God's word, it'll never fall. Amen. Till the day that Jesus comes, there will always be his church. People may leave the doctrines of Christ, but you can mark it down. There will always be a church that sticks to the book. Amen. I don't want it to be said that my church fell away from God. My church fell away from the Word of God. I want the Lord to look down and say, that's my church. Amen. Amen. We ought to go to a church that Jesus started. Amen. So be careful because there's a lot of lies out there. There's a lot of fakes. Amen. Kind of like money. You can get a counterfeit, but it's not worth anything. You can get a counterfeit, but it won't help you. You can go to a counterfeit, but it won't, it won't profit you. You won't grow. You won't be able to get anything with it. Amen. But you go to a church that's not counterfeit, that's, that's started by Jesus Christ, and you'll see that there's more to it. There's value in that kind of a church. Amen. Now, once you're a part of a local church, amen, it doesn't stop there. God doesn't want want you to just go to that church. God wants us to build His church. Amen. Now, Jesus builds His church, but God wants us to get in the yoke with Him. Amen. The fields are wide unto harvest, the Bible says. 
someone has to reap the harvest. Now, a church can die. God's church can die because, like the Bible says, the church is compared to a body. Let me show you. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 18. There are a lot of churches that started out right, and now they're gone. They're dead. They're no longer there. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 18. The Bible says, And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. The church is compared to a body, like what you have, a physical body. The church is compared to that. And we are all members of that body. Your physical body has members. It has uh, different members of it that perform different functions. And God says we are members of the body of Christ where we all perform a different function, but we all work together for one common purpose. Amen. And a church like a body can die. If we don't take care of our body, if we don't take care of ourselves, amen, if we just let ourselves go and don't do what we know we should, amen, we can die. The church is like that. If we don't take care of the church, if we don't follow God's instructions to his, for His local church, then we can die. Our church can cease to exist. Colossians 2.19 And not holding the head from which, from which all the body by joints and bands have, having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. The Bible says the nourishment, look at there, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered. We have to be nourished, amen. If you lose your nourishment, you begin to die. And God says we've got to hold the head. Who's the head of the body? Jesus Christ, amen. And then look, and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. The church will only increase if we allow God to increase. God will increase our church if we and, and we will see an increase if we do it God's way. Look verse 20. Wherefore if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world ye are subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. So God has His church. And God wants His church to follow His pattern. Amen. And like the body, the body to continue must have new blood. Amen. We must, our body has to continually make new blood and continually have the oxygen, the nourishment. Our church has to have the same. Amen. So how do we build a church? How do you, how do you help God in this endeavor for His church to keep your church from dying? Amen. Well, number one, we recognize Christ's role. We recognize Christ's role. Ephesians 5, 23. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. The Bible says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. The first thing about Christ in the church that we need to recognize is he purchased the church. Amen? The church has been purchased by Christ. Amen. Jesus shed his blood and he gave his life so that we could have a home in heaven and he has purchased us with his blood. Amen. The church has a great price on it because Jesus paid for it with blood. Amen. Verse 25, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. Jesus gave his life for you because he wants you to be saved. He wanted to purchase you, amen, give you a home in heaven, amen. And Jesus' church was purchased with blood, amen. He's the purchaser of the church. People say, well, church isn't that important. Then why did Jesus give his life for it? Jesus came and started the local independent Baptist church, 
and we think we're okay because we'll stay home and we'll say, you know, I don't need church. I can have church at home. But Jesus didn't pay for the home, amen. He paid for your church. He gave himself for it. Jesus gave his life so that you could have a church. Amen. Now, we make up the church. We are the church. The church is not a building. It's not brick and mortar. The church is us. And when we accept Jesus as our Savior, amen, it's because uh, Jesus wanted us, amen. He didn't want the building. He didn't want necessarily what the carpet and the speakers, amen. That's not what Jesus came for. He came to seek and to save that which was lost, amen. He loves the church, and he gave himself for it. So Jesus purchased the church. You can't be a part of the church if you're not part of Jesus, amen. You can't join the church, amen. You can come and join the building, but the true test of joining the church is knowing that you've been born again, amen. Have you been born again today? Do you know that Jesus is your Savior? Have you accepted Him? He gave His life for you. He did everything that He could. Amen. He did the only thing that could be done in giving His life. There, people say there's other ways to heaven. But let me tell you, it's only through the blood of Christ. Have you been born again? Amen. Number two, He purchased the church. Number two, He must be preeminent. Look back there in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. He must be preeminent. Verse 18, the Bible says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus says he has to have the preeminence. I'm looking for another verse here real quick. Um, Colossians 1.18. We're going to go there now. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. We read this earlier. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Jesus must be preeminent. Preeminent means he must be given first place. Amen. In a church... For a church to increase, for a church to build, amen, for a church to increase with God's increase, we must not only be purchased, but we must give Jesus the preeminence. That means Jesus must be first. Jesus must have first place in all that we do, amen. He said in all things he might have the preeminence. In every decision, in every area, in every facet, Jesus must be first, amen. Sometimes in churches... They try to put the man first. They try to put uh, other things in place of God. Or they say, well, we won't do this because uh, maybe it's not comfortable for the people. No, you do what you, you serve in the church and you give God every decision because Jesus must have first place. A lot of times we make decisions because it benefits us. But for a church to increase, we must do what Jesus said to do. Amen. Jesus must have the preeminence. Churches are closing their doors on Sunday nights because they say, well, nobody's coming. Well, Jesus said, go to church. Amen. And I don't care if nobody shows up, I'll be here. You know why? Because in all things, I want Jesus to have the preeminence. I want Jesus to be first. I'm not going to let worldliness into the church. You know why? Because Jesus must have the preeminence. I'm not going to let the devil influence the church. Why? Because Jesus must have the preeminence. I'm not going to let anybody influence the decisions we make. Why? Because Jesus must have the preeminence in his local church. We have to put Jesus back where he belongs. He doesn't belong on a cross that sits around our neck on a necklace. He doesn't belong on a cross that sits, in the bap that sits above the baptistry that we stare at or on the stained glass window. No, he belongs in the first place and he belongs on the throne of our hearts that we give him the preeminence in everything that we do. We don't just come and, and, uh, and tip our hats to God on Sunday and then live like the devil on Monday. No, we give Jesus the preeminence, the first place in every area of our lives. He must have the preeminence. God will never increase a church that doesn't put Jesus at the forefront. 
Now, other churches do increase, but it's not the increase of God. God has His increase, just like the devil has His increase. There are churches that are huge, but don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And you know what happened? They've increased, but it wasn't God's increase. Amen. They don't have the fullness of the Holy Spirit of God. They don't have their prayers answered like God would have your prayers answered. They don't have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. You know why? Because they're not increasing the way God wants to increase. You must give Christ the preeminence if you want God to increase. Amen. Verse 19, For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Jesus holds all fullness. Every answer we need, every problem we face, we can go to Jesus. Amen. We can put Him first. Not only did He purchase the church, not only did it, must He be preeminent, but He causes us to produce. In John chapter 14, He says, I, Without me, ye can do nothing. If we don't have Jesus involved, if we don't put Him preeminent, and if we don't realize that without Jesus, we can't produce. Churches try to produce Christianity without having Jesus involved. Joel Olstein tries to produce Christianity, but it'll never work because he doesn't involve Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't have a live-you-want-to lifestyle and increase the church. Amen. Jesus must uh, he, he is the one that causes us to produce. Amen. It's through Jesus Christ. Amen. And that goes back again to being saved. If you don't have Christ on the inside, if you're not born again, you'll never produce like you'd want to. But a church will never produce if we don't let it be done God's way. Jesus is the authority of the local church. Amen. And His Word is our authority. God gave us the Word, His Word. Jesus said these are His words. Jesus is the Word. And so for us to produce, we have to rely on Christ. We have to rely on His Word. Amen. It's the ultimate authority. It's why we do what we do. The church cannot function outside of the Word of God. If it tries to, then it functions outside of God's will. Jesus causes us to produce. Number four, He is the perfect standard. The way that Jesus lived His life, He was holy and perfect. Don't let anybody ever tell you different. Don't let, everybody, don't let anybody try to tell you that Jesus was anything but perfect. Because Jesus was perfect, amen. And He was the perfect standard for how the church ought to live. For how we as His people ought to live our lives. He gave you His word to show you what He did. And you follow His example, and I promise you, everything will be okay. You'll increase the way God wanted you to increase. And then number five, He is preparing to receive us. Christ's role in the church is He's our perfect standard. Like I said in number four, we look to Jesus, and we don't compare ourselves to each other. We compare ourselves to Jesus Christ. And that's who we try to be like. We want to form ourselves after His fashion. But we have to realize also His role is He's preparing to receive us. Jesus is preparing a place in heaven for His church. Amen. What a blessing. One day He's going to split the sky wide open, going to come down, and the trumpet's going to sound, and those who are alive and remain will be caught up with Him. But only if you're born again. If you're not born again, you'll see everybody else around you leave and you'll remain. You'll watch as your loved ones are gone. You'll watch as those you knew, those you cared about, those that were born again will be gone. Because Jesus is preparing a place, but it's for His church. Amen. If you're not born again, He's not preparing a place for you. I ask you today, do you know you're born again? Because Jesus is preparing a place, but only for those that are saved. Amen. And Jesus knows. He sees the heart. You can lie to the preacher. 
You can lie to the fam your family. You can lie to everybody else. But when Jesus comes back, he'll know. And when he calls us and the trumpet sounds, there's no fooling Jesus then. Verse 20 says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Jesus knows who he has reconciled to himself. He knows everybody in this room. And he knows whether or not he's paid for your sin. You can fool me today, but you can't fool Jesus. When Jesus comes back, I beg you, make sure you're born again because you'll be left. Number two, we must first recognize Christ's role. Number two, we must realize our responsibility. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Jesus has his role in the church. Now we must realize our role, our responsibility. What did God tell us to do? Matthew 28, verse 18, the Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus' command to the local church is the Great Commission. Amen. We're to go and reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 15 says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Our responsibility is to preach the gospel. We're saved. We're born again. But that's not it. God doesn't just have you stop there. Amen. God wants you to preach the gospel. We have to submit to God. Amen. Our responsibility in our local church is to submit to God's authority. We must submit to the pastor. We must submit to each other. We must submit to God. Amen. In our church, we, everybody here, we all work together, and we have to submit ourselves to each other and to the Lord to get God's increase. Amen. That's our responsibility. We must serve. Amen. God wants us to serve. God doesn't want you to just to come and sit in a pew and do nothing, amen. God wants you to serve, amen. God wants you to get busy, amen. The church isn't going to clean itself, amen. We've got to serve in the church. We've got to help clean. We've got to help get out there and knock doors and go soul winning. We've got to do our part to serve in our local church because Jesus has given that job to us, amen. He's in heaven and he's doing his role. Now we have our role. We have to serve, amen. We have to get busy serving God, doing what we can, amen. Then number three, we must be stewards. We must submit, we must serve, and we must be stewards, amen. God commands us to tithe. God commands us to, do, uh, to give an offering. God commands us to be good stewards, not just of our money, but of our time. God wants you to be a good steward of his local church for him to increase, amen. We've got to be willing to follow His command with our money. Be following His command with what God has given to us. Amen. You've, uh, the church here has formed the pulpit committee. You know why? Because they want to be a steward of God's church. They want to find God's man. They wanted to find what God had. Amen. That's being a good steward. That's taking care of the house of God. That's what God wants us to do. God wants us to take care of His house. He's given to us the church. He's given to us the people of the church, and God wants us to take care of each other and be good stewards of the house of God. Number four, we must be soul winners. Preach the gospel, amen. Everywhere you go, carry a gospel track. Everywhere you go, tell the good news of Jesus, that Jesus died and gave us a home in heaven, and that everybody can be saved, amen. Like Paul said, we ought to, everywhere we go, not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. We ought to preach the gospel. That's our job. Jesus isn't going to preach the gospel for us. He's given that job, that responsibility to us as His church to preach Jesus. Amen. Like Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch, the Bible says he preached unto him Jesus. That's our job. To preach unto everybody outside of these four walls that Jesus saves. Amen. That's why we focus on soul winning. That's why we hand out gospel tracts and we go everywhere we go and try to 
compel people of the gospel and give them the gospel. Why? There's a burning hell and Jesus can save you from that. Jesus can give them a new home in heaven. Amen. And Jesus is, he wants them to be saved, but he's given that responsibility to us to win loss to Christ. Amen. We have to take up that responsibility. We have to go into all the world, preach the gospel as much as we can. God will open the door. And God will give you the increase. But you've got to be willing. Get out there and preach the gospel. Amen. And then number five, our responsibility, we must sanctify. Part of God's uh, responsibility to us is not only must we be soul winners, but when we, be, uh, when we want God to increase, God says that His church should be holy. Amen. We must continue to fashion ourselves after our perfect standard. And that's Jesus Christ. We must continue to ask ourselves in our lives, is that what Jesus would do? Would Jesus do that? Would Jesus be pleased? Would the Father in heaven look down and be pleased with our standard of living? God says our responsibility is to clean it up. He gives us an entire book, amen, the Bible, and tells us how we ought to live. Now God wants you to live like it. God wants you to live by it as close as you can. As much as you can. Amen. God wants you to live after what Jesus has taught us. Amen. A lot of churches will tell you, you can do what you want, and God will be okay with that. And God says it's not true. God says, yes, you're saved. You're born again. You're my child. Now I have a standard. I have a way that I want you to live. Amen. I have a way that... God says, I have a way that He wants us to function. Amen. He doesn't want us to look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, and then come in and praise Jesus on Sunday. Amen. God wants us to look like Jesus and to get closer to Him. And as we read this morning, He wants us to draw nigh to God so He can draw nigh to us. But if we begin to become friends with the world because we think that God's okay with being friends with the devil, being friends with the world. And God says we can, become an, we can become an enemy of God. We can be at enmity with God. Amen. Is there anything in your life that God would not be pleased with? You know why God wants you to clean it up? Because if you're not, you can't produce. You look at when you go and you plant flowers or you plant anything and you want it to produce... You can't just leave trash everywhere. Amen. When you go and look at orchards, they take care of the ground. They take care and they, and they make sure that everything looks good. And they make sure it's cleaned up, that there's not leaves and rotting debris everywhere. They make sure that they clean it out. You know why? Because they know that if you allow the, the, the poison and the, and the rot to sit, that it will affect the production of those plants. God knows that if you just sit and wallow in sin, it affects your production for Him. We won't, be, we won't be as effective in this old world. The more sin that you get involved in, the less produce you yield to God. Amen. That's our responsibility. God says He wants us to clean our lives up. God wants us to, to look like Jesus looked. Amen. Why? Not for salvation. Amen. But because we're saved, and because we want to produce, and we want our church to increase, we must do it God's way. Amen. Lastly, we must rely on the Holy Spirit. We must rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a personal hand in the local church. When Jesus left, He said, I would send to you the Comforter. Amen. The Holy Spirit is with us, and He indwells every believer. He guides into all truth. He leads us to do more. The Holy Spirit will give us boldness to give the gospel. The Holy Spirit will lead you to those who, need, who you need to deal with for salvation. The Holy Spirit will help us teach others. The Holy Spirit will teach us. The Holy Spirit wants to use us as a personal tool to grow the church. The Holy Spirit must give us the power. Amen. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit empowers the church. Amen. You can't do anything, amen, unless the Holy Spirit empowers it. Amen. The Holy Spirit has His personal touch. Amen. Number two, the Holy Spirit will give us peace. 
in every decision that we make, if we want to do it for God, the Holy Spirit will bring peace to those decisions. Amen. But only the Holy Spirit can bring that in your life. Only the Holy Spirit can bring a peace and a joy and a happiness that's, never found, that's not found anywhere else. Amen. That's why churches all over, people are looking for God. They go and they, ha- and they, and they get into all the, the music and everything that church has to offer and they walk away the same because the Holy Spirit can't work. Amen. The Holy Spirit can give you the peace that you need. The Holy Spirit can can fill you and use you for God's glory. But you've got to get, you've got to go, amen, and realize that you have to rely on the Holy Spirit for that. Amen. Then also the Holy Spirit brings people. Amen. The Holy Spirit will convict people. Amen. It's not our job to save people. Amen. It's our job to give the gospel. But the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts the heart. The Holy Spirit is the one that when we give the gospel and when we serve, that He convicts people's hearts. He's the one that pricks. He's the one that taps on their door, the door of their heart, and says, listen to that man. He's preaching the truth. You need to trust Jesus as your Savior. The Holy Spirit's the one that walks down the aisles and walks down the pew and He convicts the hearts of sinners and He convicts the hearts of saints and tells them, this is what you need. Listen to Him. Listen to the Word of God. Amen. You've ever, uh, if you've ever experienced salvation, amen, what you experienced was the Holy Spirit touching your heart and the Holy Spirit convicting you and telling you you're a sinner and you need Jesus. You've never felt the Holy Spirit's conviction. If you've never felt the Holy Spirit come down and, and, and tell you of your need of a Savior, amen, then I beg that you'd listen to Him today. The Holy Spirit will prick your heart. The Holy Spirit, as a Christian, when you're saved, He'll begin to prick you even more. Say, look, you need to change. Look, you need to go. Look, you need to go so on Him. Look, give them a track. Look, change that. Look, get at the altar. Look, watch your family. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. But we have to rely on Him. We can't rely on ourselves and our knowledge. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. God will give us wisdom that we need for our church. God will give us the wisdom to go in the right direction. But we have to rely on the Holy Spirit of God to do that. We can't go in our own power We can't go in our own peace of mind. We have to get a hold of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the one that moves in the church, the Bible says. It's a still small voice, but it's the Holy Spirit's voice. Amen. Don't listen to the voices of everybody else around you. You listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Don't look for everybody else's approval. You look for God's approval. Amen. You don't look for uh, everybody else around you to tell you this is what you ought to do. Now, nothing wrong with good advice. But you get a hold of God on your knees and you rely on the Holy Spirit. And for a church to increase, we must get on our knees and rely on the Holy Spirit to show us the way. Amen. That's what God wants. Do you want to build a church? Amen. Do you want to allow God to let the church increase? Well, then we've got to recognize Christ's role. We've got to put Jesus back where He belongs. Give Him the preeminence. Not let into our homes and our families and our church what Christ wouldn't want. And number two, we've got to realize our responsibility. Recognize where we need to take up the task. We've got to pick up the yoke, the Bible says, and get serving God. Where could you serve God more? What could you do more for God? That's our responsibility. Then number three, we've got to rely on the Holy Spirit. You've got to be willing to let the Holy Spirit do the work. Amen. Too often we try to do it in our own power. Let's let God build the church. Let's be the tools in the Master's hand. The vessels that the Holy Spirit can fill to do the work of God. He says, I sought for a man, but I found none. Let it not be named in our church that God would seek for a man to use and not find one.
God wants to use you this morning. God wants you to help Him in the endeavor to reach the world through the church. You've got to let, let Him do that. Volunteer. Give yourself to God. Here am I, Lord. Send me. And when the Holy Spirit touches your heart, you act on it. You do it. Maybe today the Holy Spirit's touched your heart. Maybe you don't know that if you died, you'd go to heaven. You say, I've never heard anything like this before. But I know that the Holy Spirit touched my heart, and you need to get saved this morning. Come forward at the invitation. Let me deal with you or somebody deal with you and show you how that you can know that if you died today, you'd go to heaven. Don't leave this church not knowing that if you died, you'd go to heaven. Worst thing you could ever do. Don't walk out the back doors when the Holy Spirit pushes on your heart. Don't, don't reject Him. Don't say no. Come forward and let God deal with you and get saved. Amen. As a Christian, maybe the Holy Spirit's touched your heart about what more we could do. Maybe we need to put Christ back where He belongs. Maybe we need to do more in our church. God's put pricked your heart about it. The Holy Spirit says, look, you need to do that. You need to take care of that. Then don't say no. Come forward at the altar and give it to God. Turn around in your pew there and kneel and give yourself to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, if you'll, ha if you'll help me, I'll do it. Don't say no to the Holy Spirit. And then maybe you're doing it. Well, then let's commit to band together and to keep serving God to build His church. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father.